Hey everyone, and welcome back. Another engine teardown is part of this teardown series. I've got somebody helping me out. Say hey to Mike. Hey, how are you doing, everybody? <laughs> Mike, uh, we built uh, actually this really cool Evo. I'm going to throw up some pictures so you guys can see it. So Mike had always basically wanted a knucklehead. Pretty right? much. Right. Okay, I can't afford it though. <laughs> yeah, and can't find one, and when you do, they're impossible to afford. So uh, it took us a year and a half, two years, About I guess. Two years, yeah. Yeah, sourcing parts and stuff. So uh, basically, it was make this Evo look like a knucklehead. Uh, he got to choose his colors and all this other type of stuff. A uh, little design nuances here and there is a bit of a tip of the hat to the original knucklehead. And uh, and but the bonus is you've got the reliability. Yep. And the drivability of it, ride it anywhere, and you been riding it every day pretty much right yep and all weather too all weather too i love it got her and he, and he kicks it too kick start and electronic ignition that's yep. a tough thing to do so uh anyway, back to the teardown guys this is going to be a fun one i think i'll tell you what it came out of but i have absolutely no idea what could be wrong with it uh it belongs to kelly out of tennessee this engine came out of a salvage yard right so we have no history we have no idea what we're going to find we're going into it completely blind i do know a couple of details about the engine i know it came from a 2013 road king i know it was in a wrecked bike uh and he bought the motor from a salvage yard it's got 30 to 32 thousand miles on it and it came with a 90-day warranty so that's really all we know so uh we're going to be obviously we're going to go through and do some physical inspections i'm going to go through this pretty quick mike has never seen an engine tore down in person from start to finish so he's going to be joining in and uh giving me a hand helping me out and i think you know a lot of the processes i'm going to speed through them but the the biggest purpose of this video i think on this engine is the clues so i when i run into something if i see something that may give me a clue as to what we might find inside uh, I want you guys to know that. So here we go. Let's get started. So we'll do a visual inspection. I want to look and see, being it came from a salvage yard I'm, and it was a wrecked bike, you know, a quick inspection looking for any broken, you know, broken bent fins, anything like that. There is a tremendous amount of, uh, see all the carbon buildup in here in the yep. ports? Yep. Uh, the intake ports are just caked, caked with carbon. So we have a pretty good idea. We're going to adjust that alone. Uh, we may see some ring issues. We may see some cylinder issues. It could have a cam plate oil pump problem. It might be something. Uh, ain't that something? Ain't that something? Uh, the other humor is awesome. <laughs> yeah, the humor is awesome. All right, so uh, we know we've got something going on with this thing. It's just a tremendous amount of carbon, which I'll show you guys in a minute. But I don't see any physical damage, so we're going to start with the... Uh, we're going to start with spark plugs. All right, what do you see? I'll let you look first. Um, looks can to me, but I know it's... Um, my plug looks a little bit better than that, but it doesn't look bad. It doesn't look terrible. Um, one thing I will say, it's got a bit of a red tint to it, rusty red tint to it, and especially on the ground strap. That red tint is telling me that this person more than likely had a detonation problem with this engine, and he couldn't get it tuned properly. So what he did was run Octane Booster. That red stuff is a good indication of Octane Booster. See how that rusty color on it? Yep. All right. So I'll let you guys see. See the rusty color? And then if we look at, I know you probably can't see it on the video, if we look at the center porcelain, if you guys have ever looked at my how to read a spark plug video, there are bits all in this center porcelain. And that in combination with this red rust color, I guarantee you this owner was running uh, Octane Booster. And more than likely what we're going to find is a red color on the bottom of the exhaust valve as well when we get in there. What does that say? 12, 12, five of 12. Well, we've got loose, uh, 
<laughs> all the rocker bolts are loose. Make it easy. That might make it easy. Um, I don't know if Kelly opened this engine up or not, but uh, we're gonna get in there and find out. And as we go along, Mike, what I'll do is I take this stuff apart. Mm -hmm. If uh, you'll give me a hand with it, we'll put move it to the shelf over there right. and then just kind of pile the bolts up with each thing. I'm out of my gems bolts or organizers because we've got so many engines to apart at this point. Yeah, we got a ton sitting over here. Put that off here. Yeah, you can go ahead and pull it off. There you go, sir. Same. Take that one off. Uh, it's got uh, remnants of a st uh, stock stock rocker box gaskets in here. Uh, it's so far, it looks clean in there. But uh, let's go ahead and take our temp sensor out. Do we know how long this engine is sitting idle? We have no idea. That sticker that was on, it had a sticker on the top that was stamped December of 12, but that's kind of weird. So uh, it looks like it's been sitting around for a long time. And so I don't know if that December of 12 would have been a, uh, uh, let me put that over the side too. If that December of 12 would have been a, like their intake, their inventory, or if that was, but if it was December, it had to be when they took the engine in because December of 12 would have made this a 13 model, which it's a 2013 Road King. So that's absolutely possible. Let me see. All right, we're gonna step back a little bit. I wanna take, since we still got stock push rods in here and such, I wanna get it up to TDC. Uh, so that, because uh, if, if we're at TDC on the hill of the cam, mm -hmm. then uh, we don't run the risk of warping these as we re release them because there can be tension on them from, uh, right. from the cam, right? And the lifters. But we've still got the stator on here. Look at this. How awesome is this? There we go. That's cool. Yeah, it is. Makes it easy to install, too. The magnets look okay. Nothing there. We'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and pop the stator loose. And let's hope we don't find any bolts that are, uh... of course you don't see that that much. You know on the uh, M8 video we did where I was talking about the Loctite, how much Loctite and stuff. Mm -hmm. You typically don't see that on much of that on twin cams. These bolts are coming out nice. Plugs different than that. Oh yeah. yeah, they changed over the course of over the course of the years. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the crank sensor. All right, now let's turn it over, and we're gonna get us make sure we're on. There we go. Got it. Now, yes, I'm using the drill to do this, but we're still gonna bring it up a little at a time. Break loose, or go ahead and pull this one. Whew. 
Whoo, that old girl stinks. Can you smell it? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can tell it had a lot of heat in it. There we go. All right, let's see if we see anything. Nothing excessive. We can go to the side with that. My hands are moving, moving too fast. Really quick, don't they? Yeah, they get really quick, slippery. see anything too crazy I don't see a lot of oil inside that breather element either Whew. <laughs> can you smell it it's not so bad on this side man it's put your nose right there at the rocker box smells nice yeah it's rancid rancid You smell it <laughs> it's bad <laughs> she was hot this thing was hot all right you can try to pop that off if you can you might have to tap it with a hammer all right don't use your heel of your hand with I'll show you an easy, right. easy way to get it off. We can just take a rubber mallet right here on this corner right here. Just a light tap, typically all it takes, unless it got really hot. Like that. <laughs> unless it got really hot, just like that. There she goes. Oh yeah. Now we're really gonna start smelling it. Okay. Whew. We're still dealing with uh, stock gaskets. By the way, guys, have you seen the new shirts on the Teespring store? This is the new one, and then we've still got a few of the uh, we've still got a few of the, sh the Curve Bike commemorative shirts uh, left, so they're on the Teespring store as well. Come out with our compression releases. Got it? There we go. Now with a relatively low mile engine, something that has doesn't have that many miles on it, what would cause it to get that hot right out of the factory? Uh, Ooh. Tuning. 
Uh, well, intake leaks can cause it. Tuning, but you said, you know, directly out of the factory. Um, who we got a lot of oil on that. A lot of oil. Um, hmm. Okay, now this this is interesting. We got we have a ton of oil on this compression release, but the rocker box isn't leaking. I don't see a sign anywhere of moisture. I don't see anything uh, where the rocker box was leaking, so we got to figure out where that oil came from. Um, you know these these bikes when they they come out of the they come out of the factory. You know, of course they're they're EPA compliant. They have to be. Um, there's so much variance. Ooh, that don't feel good. You dragging or? We're gonna come out easy with this one. It's got a lot of buildup on it or something. Um, and these engines ship everywhere. You know, they so depending on fuel qualities and stuff like that can affect how hot an engine will run. And you never know, it could have it could have sat in traffic. I mean it, it could have, you know, a lot of elements to it, really. Oh Lord. That's a wet tooth. That's covered in oil. And you see there's no sign of look down in there there's no sign of a rocker box leak so like I said we had a tremendous amount of carbon in the intake ports so we've got a cylinder piston problem or something and the further we go we're seeing oil this is on the compression release and uh, there was no uh, that compression release actually broke um, and there was no sign of oil from a leaking rocker box so let's see what's next I'll show you a trick to breaking these off I see a lot of people doing like this mm -hmm. you got to look use the leverage to your advantage so if you're pulling towards yourself if you watch the motor won't the motor won't move if I pull this direction I can do that right. and then when I go to the other head Notice how the other thing, you saw the M8 teardown video, right? Where I was talking about head torques. That's a lot easier. So this one, you switch directions. Hold on it here. And then it's not jumping all around the bench on you. All We are going to see carbon on pistons. We are going to see carbon in the combustion chamber. And what I'm thinking happened already, I, I think I'm going to be surprised if we don't see that red rusty color on the exhaust valve. All right, so what I think happened, I'll tell you right off the bat, this engine got smoking, smoking hot at some point. We can smell it. It got really, really hot. And then... Uh, started running octane booster and it just a combination of heat and everything else trashed the pistons and rings that's got to be it and as he built up more carbon it was detonating more so he was putting octane booster in it now, to help reduce any detonation what would have been a smarter move for him uh leak down cylinder pressure test make sure the engine was healthy uh monitoring which a tuner would monitor cylinder head temperatures Proper tune on the bike. Um, yeah, so let's let me turn it around this way. Oh, that's what we're gonna see. I know that's what we're gonna see. No doubt. And here we go. Three, two, one. Holy crap! There it is. Yep. See, guys. See the red color. So. I can tell you right now that that's what was going on. That red rusty stuff, just like I said, is octane booster. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you the ports too while we're looking. I mean, this thing is just chewed up with carbon. Intake ports right there, just, I mean, it's just a layer. Uh, the intake valve is gold. The valve stem is gold. Uh, 
Yeah, we nailed that one. So we can go ahead and put that over there if you like. Yep. Let's take a look at this piston. <laughs> since we're uh, uh, since we're not using this piston, let's carve some of this out. <laughs> Look at this. Wow. You don't need a shirt. Look at this. Yeah, you don't need. And you, the top of the piston, I think you guys can see it, is again has that gold color. That's exactly what happened to this engine. Um, yeah, that's it. So let's pull this, see what we got. I was afraid of that. It's gold. Oh, there it is. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh, that cylinder is, yeah, that cylinder is just trashed. Wow. Okay, let's keep going. There's that. Look at this. Oh. Wow. Okay. It's like a mystery pack of Legos. And this, that's the cool part about this. You didn't know anything to start out. But there are clues that will tell you. You've torn down as many engines and built as many engines as I have over the years, those clues start to make sense. And that's what I hope people like about watching the videos, is they, it gives you a sense of, of what to look for. Um, I can't, I, so far, actually, I can't see anything factory wrong with the engine necessarily, right? It's a result of, of heat or... And I, and I don't see any reason for the guy, we haven't looked in the cam chest yet, but so far it's got stock gaskets on it, it appears, stock pistons, stock this. I, I don't see this as being a necessarily a factory issue per se. We don't know how much something's going on, but uh, no question it was overheating. It probably overheated, uh, started some blow by, uh, and then when you get the blow by, then you get the elevated crank pressure, and then you start getting oil migration on top of the piston. The carbon buildup, his detonation started. He's putting in an octane booster to try to stop the detonation and all that. So what I'm getting at is if everything is stock inside the cam chest, the heads are completely stock, the pushrod tubes had the stock clips on it. So what that tells me is that no one put easy install pushrods in here, right. all right, because you got to use the shorter tubes. We know we're dealing with stock head gaskets. We could have seen that right away. I think when we're open this, it's going to be a relatively completely, it's going to be a completely stock engine. Right. That being said, there was really no need for anybody to tune this thing. There was no reason. It's a stock engine. Right. Unless they had just exhaust on it and just a high flow air cleaner. That would be the only reason. But so far, I'm looking at a daisy chain of an engine that got hot and, uh, and, using octane booster and then it just got to a point that it was this is going to be the worst one and i'll tell you this before we crack it open this is the rear one mm -hmm. this is the one that smells the worst all right uh this is the one that had the worst burns on the uh uh compression release all right that sound good does it yeah, I don't know. so this is going to be the worst one and this is also the hottest you know, typically your hottest cylinder, especially if this guy sits in traffic. <laughs> it does look nice. <laughs> God. Wow. All right. See our see our red rust color again, and it's it's flaking off in here. Um, just yeah. How about that? You got like a ring of goop up here too. <laughs> yeah, we can get. Oh, let me show them the port too. Uh, carbon and oil just piled into the exhaust port there, uh, piled into the intake port there. Uh, so there's that. Now we've got around the ring at the top of the piston, just piled, piled in there. Oh, it's coming off. It's in chunks. That's exactly what happened. It, it had to be. We're going to find out in a minute on 
when we measure crank run out, when we open up the cam chest, right? Mm -hmm. But what honestly, I believe this was, we saw it right off the bat. We had the smell, the burn smell, drastic overheating, that affected ring seal, that put the carbon on the piston, it starts detonating, nobody can figure out why, and he puts octane booster in it to stop the detonation. There's no question it was running octane booster. Whew. Oh, this cylinder is... Look, it's matte gray. It looks like somebody did it with a scotch break. That's exactly what happened. All right, let's see what we can get out of it. Just stuff. Let's see if you guys can see it. There's no crosshatch left on this one at all. See y'all down in here? Let me step around. There's a little bit down there, but you can see, I don't know how this comes through on the camera. There's no crosshatch left all the way down and through here, and it just has this frosty gray color all through here. It just got cooked, guys, and there's another spot running down through there, uh, down through there. Uh, yeah, she got hot. And I'll give you another look at the top of this piston right here. See that? Let me get over more over here. Yeah, I don't even need that going. You know what? If we beat blast it, I bet we can reuse it. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> All right. Look at that on the piston top there. Is that something? But again, you can tell this without taking things apart, just reading the, the plugs, right? Yes. So. Yes. Um, knew it got hot. I could see the detonation on it. Could see the rust color. We could see the oil on it mm -hmm. and before we even started tearing this thing down. So. But when folks are normally running and they start thinking something's wrong before they start doing, you know, expensive stuff. You start with the basics. Yep. And, and, you know, and Mike, that's a great, great point. You start with the, but even a little bit of oil in a throttle body is not an indication of a massive, massive issue. There are people that have a little, all engines missed a little bit of oil. People freak out, think they got a massive, massive problem. Now it's relative to the quantity, right? Yep. But, and also the modification to the engine. Like on my Pro Charger Nitrous bike, I'm gonna have 3 8 inch AN6 fittings coming directly out of the rocker boxes, two catch cans, you know, all that stuff. But it's gonna be running and it's gonna have, a, it's gonna have blow by. It's gonna have at eight pounds of boost plus nitrous. Mm -hmm. I've gotta relieve that current case pressure somehow and that engine will have blow by. I'm expecting it. My ring gaps have to be about 10,000 or bigger. Exactly, but point being, it's still all relative, yep. right? So, but the, so the basics, the first things before you go start going nuts, is uh, a leak down, a cylinder pressure test, check the health of the rings. Those are trickier to do than people think they are, but leak down cylinder pressure test, bore scope the cylinders. A little bit of marks in them is not that big of a deal. A little bit of this term frosting has went around everywhere, and that's not that big of a deal either, right? So if you do a leak down and a cylinder pressure test and it shows healthy and you look in the cylinder and you see a little bit, mm -hmm. in other words, it's not an issue. It's not an issue, all right? So then, but what's not uncommon to see, like one example where, you know, how we do our cylinders and square them up, it vastly reduces it. But we've got four studs here. So when you cinch down on this cylinder, it's not unusual to see a little bit of a gray area on a, with an engine that's got some miles on it, a little bit in those areas. Um, it, it's more prone to cylinders that aren't perfectly squared up on a lathe, but you know, stuff like that. So it's just, sometimes people panic when it's relatively small issues, and sometimes issues can be rectified without having to spend a ton of money, mm -hmm. right? So here's that, let's get these. And I'll be willing to bet we're going to get in here, we're going to see a completely stock cam chest. And I'm also, I'm going to go ahead and bet that we've got less than, I'm going to say less than five thousandths run out on that crank. I think this whole problem was it got drastically, drastically overheated and everything went from there. 
That's my take on it. Well, I'm not going to bet against you. So. To get these off. And I, you know what? I'm going to go a step further. I bet we're not going to see any something. We might get maybe three to four ounces out of the bottom, which isn't crazy unusual, or maybe four to five ounces. But I don't think we're going to see a massive amount of oil in the bottom of this thing. Yeah, I don't think it's really getting on the flywheel too much. I don't. It might barely be touching the flywheel. There might be five, six ounces down there. And by the way, folks, I, I know you may see me being a, working a little faster <laughs> doing this one. Uh, this engine is going to get a, it's a full 117, one of our Skunk Series builds. So I'm going to be going all through this thing and it's getting new push rod tubes and all this other kind of stuff. So, um, I'm, wow, there it goes. Yep, that got hot. I'm going to spin it around. Probably going to need that again for the more than likely for the cam cover. Now let's inspect our tappets. See that that little bit of frosting, if you will. Yep. All the rollers are there. Just a little bit of frosting on the roller. In other words, it's not unusual for what I would expect to see at 30 some thousand miles. The body itself looks to be in relatively good shape. Same with this one, exact same condition. Roller feels okay. Exactly the same on this one. Body looks fine. A little bit of frost. So in other words, the other thing that you're looking for with patterns is uneven patterns. If one of those rollers was drastically different than the other three, mm -hmm. that would be a little bit of a cause of concern. But they're all wearing about the same, right? So I'm, I still don't see any cause for concern, but when we get down in there, what, we're, what we will most likely see is the same sort of frosting, if you will, on the cams. Now's the point where we, we can get surprised. I wouldn't expect to see, like I said, maybe five or six ounces of oil coming out of it. Unless this one had a, a plethora of issues. There's our cam plate bolts. And let's see what we got. Not very much. That's maybe three ounces. Three to, Maybe th less, yeah. three to four ounces at the most. Inside the cover looks clean. Uh, the tensioner, average wear for 30, 35,000 miles, give or take. I'd say it's about a third of the way through, give or take. That's it. Got it? Mm -hmm. All right. The Walt needs to sponsor me. I have been, I have this, I've had this tool five six years right. and I have beat the fool out of it I started I abandoned my my small quarter drive uh, air ratchet and started using this thing and I love it so DeWald if you're watching 
I wouldn't mind having a <laughs> having a new one. <laughs> All right. Now I'm just going to loosen. I'm just going to pull the whole cam plate out. I'm going to just loosen the cam plate bolts because I'm just anxious to get in here and see what the actual crank run out is. And again, my belief is the problem originated all the way back to this thing got really, really hot. Maybe he had an intake leak that no one noticed. Another issue that I found very common around that era, there was a vacuum port on top of the throttle bodies. And it was not at all unusual for the little rubber cap uh, on that vacuum port to fall off. And engines would run hot, the stock fuel injection system would kind of compensate for it, and they would, you know, they just ran lean. And it, of course, would then run crazy hot, people chasing their tail, looking for that, dismissing a vacuum cap. So that could have been what happened. Maybe at absolutely no fault of the owners at all. Maybe he wasn't sitting in traffic, you know undiagnosed intake leak or something like that. any of those things could have caused an overheating condition and i believe one and sometimes remember we're dealing with air-cooled engines these things one good solid overheat can be all it takes to completely take one out right. so and then it starts the daisy daisy chain of other issues let me give you those oh i missed one there we go. Oh, missed another one. Getting ahead of myself. There we go. There we go. All right, see what I said here on the cam? You'd see a little similar wear pattern as we saw on the, the lifters. But, you know, that frosting thing people are talking about, freaking out about. This engine had 30,000 miles on it, give or take. Uh, there's a little more on that lobe right there, which would be on your, uh, on your uh, exhaust, rear exhaust. A little bit of wear on that one, but nothing, abs nothing at all unusual. The inner cam bearings look fine. Uh, let's check crank run out and see where we're at. And I think I can... Uh, let me take these, see if I can get these pistons off real quick. I, I can tell you more than likely, we're gonna have a hard time getting the uh, wrist pin out. Oh, we got lucky. It's all right, because I'm going to be boring these cases anyway. You can let it hit. It's fine. Um, wow. Look at that, would you? Whew. Yeah. All right. Wow. I'm surprised there. Normally, it makes it difficult to get the wrist pin out. Look at that bad boy. Crank run out. Now well, let's see. If I look at the tip on the pinion shaft, we know it has a little bit. So if you look at your wear marks right here, yep. so we rotate it over. See so a little extra there? Mm -hmm. And then it goes away. So we know we have some run out. All right. Now the. Um, the cam plate, we noticed on the pinion of the cam plate. Yeah, let's grab it and we'll take a look. It Another clue is how bad this is mushroomed out. All right, now I may get surprised on this one because if I feel here, I can feel a pretty sharp edge right there. Uh, the hole itself doesn't look elongated, but you can see where there's excessive wear a little bit on one side. See that? Yep. So there's a red flag of a crank run out issue. So we may have very well had a combination of a couple of problems on this thing. Six thousandths. 
five, five, six, six thousandths run out. Yep, six thousandths run out. Now I want to spin the crank around. And let's see if it's sticky. I don't feel any bad spots on the rod. Okay, now we're on the verge though. And more than, more than likely it could very well have been the heat. A lot of things we see, notice the gold color on the rods here as it goes down. You had the same thing on the pistons. See the gold right here? Yep. All right, so we had, obviously we had some heat in this thing. Now. Is that blue normal? Down the bottom? Yes, the blue that you see down there, that's where, from where they heat treat it. Yep. All right, for the bearings. Now you should have, you may have seen on some of the other videos, you shouldn't have any up and down at all. You know, rotate it around in several places and you're feeling to see if you have any up and down movement. Obviously I would do it slower than I just did. Yep. But you're, you should have a little bit of movement in the rod in the rear. And I really don't have any movement back there. Here I have none either. And kind of a rule of thumb is you have just, and it, this sounds crazy, but if you don't have any measuring tools and do it yourself or at home is looking at this, you'd have a little bit of a play here. I mean, just a very, very slight amount, almost zero. And this should be about twice as much. All right. All right. But it does feel a little tight. I mean, you've, I mean, you've felt some of our flywheels. Have, have you spun any of them over? Not yet, no. So it's not sticking right there's no sticky sticky mm -hmm. there is a bit of a resistance to it turning so it is possible that this one's a little tight now i can't really say why necessarily um i can't really say why other than it was just you know kind of on that verge it could have run that way for a very very long time without any issues but uh you know i don't necessarily feel anything major other than it's just slightly slightly tight so what do you think as far as diagnosis <laughs> it looks like you nailed it so far playing pulling the heads off kind of showed that yeah it showed that okay guys here's here's what i think on this one flat out I've, I've said it a couple of times i think this engine just got really really smoking hot it could have happened over a long period of time you know, again, an intake leak, an exhaust leak, uh, anything like that. Everything in this engine is completely bone stock. So we can't say any type of upgrade or anything like that. You know, it had 30-some thousand miles on it. I just think it got ridiculously hot, period. And uh, then that took the rings out. That Once it did that, it starts building up carbon. And uh, carbon everywhere like crazy. So much carbon, it began to detonate like you would expect to see and then uh, started running the octane booster. So if you, you're looking at those clues, starting from the front, working your way down, uh, that's the reason we do these teardown videos, uh, is to give, give you guys uh, some tips and tricks on how you might be able to uh, diagnose some stuff for yourself. So Mike, thanks for your help. Yep, Pound it. it. All right, uh, we've got a bunch more engine teardowns to do, guys. Uh, I think we've got, what, Mike, about uh, 10 more? <laughs> in total yeah, five sitting right here yeah we've got one two three four five yeah we've got five right there so we and more over here so we got a bunch of en more engine teardowns coming uh tonight i'm going to be chatting again with tony larimer from sada and dan am company we're going to discuss the recent paint video that i just did and uh he's going to give me some coaching there so i hope you join us for that as i go along my journey with learning to paint uh, then we have another Tool Tech Tuesday coming. We're going to jump back on the shovel head up, uh, with the curve bike there, talk about their top end oiler system, and we're going to talk about their oil pump. Uh, then I've got an interview video that we did with Matt quite some time back after having a lot of time in road testing uh, his uh, build. And uh, oh man, we got all kind of stuff coming. You're staying busy here. <laughs> we're staying busy. Thanks to me and everyone. Thanks for your support. Thanks a ton to all you members that every single month you support the channel and back what we do here. We really appreciate you. Y'all take care of yourselves and each other. Have a good one. See ya. See ya. <laughs>